YouTube, what is up? It has been a while trying to get these done faster because it, again, like I said before, it gets the table cleared off for the next batch of cars that I find. A lot of 164 scale stuff. I've been seeing a lot of cool things that I want to get in the future, so hopefully we'll see more of these videos. But I was able to find a lot of stuff locally, not a lot of stuff from the mail. Um, except for a few things we'll still see, but I'm going to stay on the round two side of things, so we're going to look at Auto World um, Racing Champions, and I think of Johnny Lightning, so we'll see that side of the coin today, then I got a lot of green light to catch up with, but Auto World, one of the favorites of the collection, um, I try to get all the ones that I like, I don't complete Auto World sets, but I definitely get the ones I can like and I kind of find you know it's becoming like a sport trying to find square bodies in person without having to order them so I'd say if once I find a couple I'm very excited <clears throat> I was able to find one my first and I think this is the second time the new generation of square body has been released so it's already mid 21 so we'll look at that truck uh, we'll compare it to the existing 80s square body trucks let's get started I want to look at some older Racing Champion castings and Ertl castings, but they've just been re-released. We're going to look at the Buick, and we're going to look at a Pontiac. So look at this thing. So this is a T-type car. It's kind of like Grand National, but it's more regal than Grand National with all the blackouts. So we'll take a look at that. It's kind of a cool casting. It's been around for a minute. Um, it's pretty decent as far as the Regals. All the Regals have been cast so far. It's one of the better ones. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. I resisted getting the earlier releases of this. Uh, I kind of like the color scheme, so we'll take a look at this real quick, and then we'll move to the Pontiac. Pontiac's cool. That's the stuff I do go after. Giant Lightning, I'm a little selective on, you know, if the casting's cool. But uh, when Racing Champions um, re-releases the old Ertl's 164th Premium cars, I always am all over those. They're all they're pretty cool. They're like the original. They're almost like the Franklin Mint 143rd, the way they're uh, put together. And we'll look at that. But this is a straight up Racing Champion car. It's kind of like the, what the Johnny Lightning uses too, where it's the two-piece wheel. There's a hub, and then there's a hub cap, and then they fit with the tire so i've noticed though i've pulled these tires off um and green light cars actually look pretty cool with these tires and they roll much better they're more like hot wheels real riders but there's no flashing on them let's take a look at the motor so this is gonna have a 38 buick's beautiful 38 push rod uh engine and um turboed so turbocharged car big turbo i think they had an intercooler at this point fuel injected Good horsepower at this point 86, 87, 87. I think it was the last year, 87, late or early 88. Basically, you can find these cars, but they did do the GNX at the end, which was very high performance turbo and everything. But they were faster than the Corvette. Corvette really was kind of doggy at this point in its life. I mean, what saved it pretty much being the fastest through the 80s was being lighter, relatively light vehicle, but. Once the fuel injected 5 liter with the multi port came out and um, some of the other stuff, the 305 Chevy and the tune port injection, it was good, but it wasn't like this. This is car was very, very stout. Um, conservative of numbers on this car from the factory, but it was easy to tune the vehicle and it was very quick. And they're still quick to this day with this same setup. I mean, there's turbos and intercoolers and all that stuff you can do, but. You're still running a six cylinder, <laughs> so great car. G body, very, very good car in the GM community. Body on frame car, coil spring suspension, four link, all the good stuff that people like when they modify vehicles. So that's cool. But so, T type car basically, you're getting the Grand National drivetrain, but more of a regal look. T type blacked out your chrome which would have been chrome on a Regal, but it didn't go crazy because you still had the bumper and the grill surround. So it wasn't completely all blacked out. It was kind of half and half. These would have been alloys, not chrome, but the alloy spoke looked similar to that. It was very close. 
The only thing about this car, I like the roof line. It's got the little tall windows and things, so it doesn't look like a chopped vehicle. It's a little narrow, so I don't like that, but it's decent. You can see here, separate bumper like it was on the real car. So they were cutting the bumpers in. They were still the same style bumper, but uh, they weren't basically coming out and, and into the wind anymore. That's kind of how they were doing them when they were trying to modernize the vehicle. And it's got that cool gray interior seat. So very happy about this. Um, probably not going to go crazy. It's one of 2,000. I did not get a double. It's funny how rare they make these things. So, let's move on. Now, this is a car I really like. This is a Racing Champions Mint car. Same release as the Buick. This is 62 Pontiac Catalina. It says Royal Bobcat. Um, muscle car, guys. Chime in on this. I think Royal Bobcat on Pontiac, I think it was a package through the dealership. They would tune the car. I don't think it was a trim from General Motors, but I can't remember. You know, Royal Pontiac had something to do with racing and stuff. But So this was the car to have in 62. I mean, you did, I think the big block W um, had Impala. But this car, so Pontiac had their own stuff. Oldsmobile had their own blocks, Cadillac. They were still doing their own engineering for powertrains back then. They consolidated. They knew that. General Motors as a corporation, they knew that they couldn't survive making their own blocks anymore. I mean, with competition. So basically, the 70s and 80s, that was killed off. But 40s all the way through, um, until then, their engineering divisions were the full package. So this car was very successful stock racing, this car. This says the... Um, more of like a hard top roof on it. I know. I think they still had in '62. I'm wondering if they did the bubble top on the Catalina. I can't remember. Catalina car, uh, I believe intermediate. It wasn't a full size like a Bonneville or something like that. There was a little bit larger. So I think this was on that, but I can't remember if it was on the, what they called intermediate or not. But you see the level of detail. So this is an older. I mean, this thing is from back in the day, really. But they had the separate exhaust, um, chassis detail, the axle, and the front suspension were cast as separate pieces that they joined in. I can't remember if the originals were metal. Uh, this is plastic underneath. Die cast chat, or body and all that. Painted interior, separate pieces. And trunks. A lot of these cars have opening trunks as well as hoods. We saw the dual quad 421 engine. Um, and then they put a fuel, they put a fuel cell in here, so that's kind of cool. And the other thing is, even though these are white walls, cheater slicks in the back. So it, it's the full package. It's just a great car. It's got the steelies. It's a little large, I feel. To one sixty fourth, but these were big cars. It does have a rake to it. <clears throat> so it's set, I mean, it looks like a drag racer, especially the way it's squatting. If I wanted to make this look a little bit more stock, I'd probably lower the front end slightly. But on the most part, especially considering the tooling age, I mean, these are awesome cars. I mean, these were what you would have wanted to get if you were collecting high-end 164th back then. I mean, these are one of the cars you'd want to get. So detail is amazing. Uh, again, a successful car. I like this. I've actually built one of these in 125th scale. They do a really good kit of that. I had it in a case, and uh, a long time ago we moved, and it kind of like rattled apart. So I got to put it together still. But it was a great car, painted gold, and it had the um, dog dish wheels and all that. It was a great car. Four speed, four twenty one dual quad. Just a great car. Next, we're gonna look at some Johnny Lightning. So this is a car I posted to Instagram. And, um, I had to change the, <laughs> I couldn't wait. I was going to kind of like wait and kind of just have it around, but it was bothering me so much that I had to change it. So we'll look at, we'll look at what I did, but 
They re-released this. This is another old tooling. This is, I think, Racing Champion. We'll look at the base again. One of 3,000. Um, they make a light blue of this, and this is also like a grayish green. It's more gray in person. This looks greenish in that picture, but I kind of upset they didn't cast those wheels with the big, big disc covers and all that. I thought that would be great. So this is a very unusual vehicle. I love it. I've known about this car forever, uh, and it has been around forever. Lagonda. It's an 83 Lagonda, so it's a Series 2 car, but Series 1 looked very similar all the way to the Series 3. Updates, but the car basically stayed the same. Well, you could see I did a big improvement on the wheel and tire package. It came originally with this kind of thing, so not too sure about that. And that was way inside. You can see how much room is in there. They were all the way close to that, so it was kind of awful, but what made me do it so quickly was the the body i love the way they cast this body and it's an older tool i think it's from around 2000 something so awesome car really really cool history big thing back in the mid 70s doing wedge designs most of them the wedges they were applied to the sports cars and the two doors and things like that not not many people wanted to attempt it with a you know a saloon a big car four door so they only made about six, seven hundred of these cars total, and production stopped into the late eighties and early nineties or something like that. Uh, correct me on that, but but it went from seventy six, five point three V eight originally. I think they changed it up a little bit towards the end. Um, not only was the design of the exterior pretty great, but the inside they're they're gonna go nuts. So they're using like fiber optics. They're using CRT. So they like TV screens in the car that showed gauges running through a circuit board, things like that. Everything was almost drive by wire. So it had a lot of cool technology. It wasn't completely sorted out. It was more like you're buying and driving a concept vehicle than you were a production car. Aston Martin was in horrendous <laughs> condition in the seventies. So there was a lot of things conspiring against this car even becoming, you know, out there for the public to enjoy but it, it made it and what this casting is from what i've think i remember because i remember coming across this and people talking about this coming out but um i think johnny lightning or racing champion yeah this is a true johnny lightning cast um they made this it was an evil knievel car he drove one of these he had one um after it failed on him i think he put uh, General Motors power plant in it, like a 454 or something crazy blown. And it had the side lake pipes on it. So I did modify the casting a little bit. So the car is amazing. It's, they do a really good representation of the vehicle. And it actually had a good ride height, but they had the side pipes on there and they had the tiny tires. So I had to get rid of all that. And I took some wheels I had laying around. I might change these out later, but I think I like the look for now. And just drilled and tapped the base, put some screws in, and I just took their standard width real rider wheels and uh, excavated the old axles, put these in, glued them in, and then made spacers, and she's ready to rock. So, rolls good. The fitment's a little wide, but it's decent. I think I'd rather have all the wheels sitting like this one, so I can probably adjust it later. But it rolls out good. And it's a great car. Really, I looked this up. Really, they don't do Series 1 through 3 Lagondas. They do the two-door. That looks like a Vantage, but it's a Lagonda. They call it a Lagonda. It looks basically the same. Um, in die-cast form. So, basically, this is it. And they didn't do the soft approach on the Johnny Lightning casting. This is very accurate to me. It's not soft at all. So, awesome car. <laughs> Um, the only thing they really skimped on was the dash. The dash is just non-existent, and it's very prominent in the real vehicle. They did the center console with all the switches, but not that dash. And look at the tail and everything. So just an amazing vehicle for its time and still. A lot of people call it the ugly car. I think it's pretty cool. And uh, very excited to have it. There's an Aston Martin grill right there. It's true Aston Martin. So... Hope to find the blue one, and I hope to find some more carded. I actually kind of want to leave this one alone, and then just do another custom.
because this car really inspired me to do something this time. So I'm very happy to have that car. I hope I get more of them. Very unique card in the collection too. All right, so we're moving into Auto World now. Let's revisit a re-released casting that they did. So they just updated it with new colors. So nothing crazy. But it's got a pretty good color on it, and they're calling this Cadillac color Mandarin Orange Poly. We're talking about the 75 Eldorado, everybody's favorite, big-ass front-wheel drive vehicle. So here it is, white top now, instead of the color top, but they're still matching the interior. So it very, has that great 70s feel to it. Awesome General Motors color. You always see this in most of the pictures. You'll see a car colored like this, so very nice to have this. Um, makes my Cadillac collection pop. I got to get the Cadillacs together for a picture. Um, I'm starting to grow my collection. I would have never thought they would have do these cars, but there are those people that are in, in power making these casts, and this is what they want. So I'm happy. We can just compare it to this one. The biggest update I've seen on this casting is they've changed the tires so unfortunately i kind of like the first run tires they have the tread on them and they're stiff even though they're pliable they're, they're stiffer they go into the older style bias ply style setup very thin sidewall is decent it's got some contour to it but they're very jelly this time so these are extremely soft and pliable they almost feel non-existent they're very very soft and Unfortunately, um, they don't. Some of them don't survive the tampo process very well. I think one of these is pretty bad. Yeah. So a little crooked looking. Plus, they molded these tires with some flashing, so it's very bumpy. Sorry, caddy. I'm gonna turn you over. Um, so that's the only thing that bothers me. But I love the car and I like the color. Maybe I can find better tires for it. There's tons of tires around that I got piles of, so I switch them out. The other good thing about this casting is the engine detail. I think for the size of the vehicle in 164 scale, it doesn't get much better than that motor. A lot of depth and clarity on the casting. There's nothing like undersized or kind of like faked. Sometimes they'll just paint something. So they did a separate... Um, support here i think this is like a bracket they're trying to make this like a radiator bracket but they put the motor forward so i think on the real car went way back almost to here where they got this set up right so a lot of this was all the engine accessories but you had this huge gap a lot of these <laughs> if you took some of this stuff off you could literally stand here and then get to the carb and all that pretty funny yeah so 472 500 cube something like that i mean huge engine and that was a cadillac motor like we were talking they did their own engine development and everything like that. Another one of those engines that you know you could balance a nickel on it or whatever when it's running. But they were very heavy duty engines. I mean they were very under stress so you could bore them out another 100 cubic inches no problem and all that nonsense. It was just a very heavy engine so for competition use it wasn't the best. It was kind of heavy. So there's your car so far. Let's look at some other stuff. Let's take a look. We're going to look at this. This is kind of an update to an existing casting. This is an SRT8 Demon Challenger. So big horsepower car. Look at that. So you can freeze frame that. Talking about being under the limit for uh, having a roll cage on NHRA tracks. So... A lot of cars can do that nowadays, actually. <laughs> they can go into that whatever, nine seconds or whatever it is. All right, or tens. So let's take a look. Uh, this was another 2021 release, Series 2. This is the gray one. I think the other one they're doing is yellow. I think I'd prefer the gray anyway, so I'm glad I found this one. The new tooling of the wheels and tires I've seen is awesome. And they got these kind of like DOT track tires, basically, is what these are. I don't know why they'd have it on both wheels. I think you would just run them on the back, but whatever. These are similar to like the Hot Wheels ones, but they're much more detailed. And they got a better sidewall profile. Still haven't corrected the window here. It's open. And they kind of just 
basically molded the lip a little bit differently. And we'll see that kind of thing when we look at the Camaros. Camaros are kind of nice looking. So, different hood too. Tooling on the hood's different. Doesn't open very good. It's about all you get. But you can see the 6.4, I think that's what it is. I think it's a 6.4. Blown. So, it's decent. It looks good. I mean, that's how that setup looks. So, very nice. And there's our little demon or demon. There he is. Sorry, it's a little dusty. I think this might have served duty in the uh, as a pocket car once or twice already, but not too much. I don't usually carry Auto World that much just because they'll chip, but I'll take them around for a little bit. Unless they're my favorite. Like the green caddy, unfortunately, I got a couple of them just <laughs> to have backups. But this one is one of my favorite cars. and it's a Some of the cars I have, they're kind of got good luck charms. So you'll take them with you and it's kind of good stuff will happen. Sometimes I go hunting with a lucky car and uh, I'll find stuff. So I just kind of keep it going. Just a little bit of uh, superstition, I guess, in the die cast world. Let's look at these pair of Camaros. They're kind of cool, I'd say. They're an update from the ZL1 that we looked at last time. Let me find the thing here. Here we go. So, orange, what they call crush, and then we got the satin steel gray, which kind of looks silver to me. So, I was able to find these two on the pegs kind of apart from each other, but like a week apart or something, but I did find them. It's hard, you know, sometimes stores will just have one B or A set, and they'll just have a bunch of those, and you'll never see the the, the other set, the other versions, so it's kind of weird. I don't know what, why they do that. I don't think they order the cases wrong. I don't think they realize. So here's the colors. These are great castings. Now, this will bring up an issue I have with some of these Auto World cars. So these modern cars with staggered front and rear tires, meaning that one might be smaller in the front, diameter-wise and width, than the rear. Well, they have to put on the set of tires differently, right? So on this orange car, and this is the one I found first, I think, in the wild, three thick tires and one skinny. And it just kills me that they, they do that. <laughs> Or the front one. I think the front one's a skinny one. So it just drives me nuts. It really does. And I don't know. Maybe they have tire bins. And when they're putting the tires together, it's supposed to be two separate bins. But they probably just jump around and land in the bins. And they're just grabbing tires, slapping them on the wheels. And it kind of gets ahead of itself. But the silver cars seem to have all fat tires, which is fine. Although I think the front would do better with a little bit smaller tire unfortunately good looking wheels and tires though I mean the rim is good tires are a little bit look at that one so <laughs> you could see the flashing in that tire so basically what I do is I go around with the knife and, and, and get that out of there and the tire is round again but when you get it out of the package they can be a little rough plastic spoiler so this is ZL1, but with the 1LE. So 1LE is a one step higher um, performance package. It gives you a little bit more aero on the car. Brakes, a little bit more aggressive tire, suspension setup, gearing. Those type of things. And it makes the car just that much faster. But it's based on the uh, ZL1, which is already crazy because it has the blown supercharged, I'd say. Uh, six two, eight cylinder. So, very stout vehicle. Driven all the fifth gen Camaros, every version of it. Never haven't really driven the. Well, I've driven the uh, sixth gen SSs and all that, but I haven't driven the ZLs or the one LEs yet. But very sharp car. The stock one. This body is a lot lighter and tighter than the old one so it's a very sharp vehicle and it's already very fast because the lt1 or one lt or whatever it is um new new age motor it's very stout it's extremely stout it's like 450 horse or, or more than that so it's already very good car got lighter and faster 
and the fifth gen was already pretty great. The other good thing about this car is they molded the exhaust separate. So another, you know, uh, engineering prowess from Auto World. They do really good with their molds, their way that they can shape metal. They also added the arrow on the car, and that's a casting, so they don't stick plastic here. This is all sharp and really nicely molded metal, and it needs to be painted because they don't bring the paint all the way through. And I'll go through it and touch it up and fix the tires and all that. But it's a cool car. It's definitely cool to have. It's nice having the late model stuff along with the old muscle car stuff. You know, they, the old muscle cars, they really can't hold a can of this stuff nowadays. It's very fast. I mean, these cars are faster than all the sports cars were, all the race cars were back then. It's crazy what you can buy nowadays. So, all right, let's 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 take a look at the engine. Did we look at it real quick? Let's look at it again. Did we zoom in it? Yeah, let's zoom. There's all our piping and everything. So they did a great job. They got the shock towers molded in, and they painted the air box, and they got the top of the um, blower there all detailed. So I'd say it, it's... It's nice. The only they just don't fill in the headlights. They should really paint those more. You'd have to go in there with like a zero 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 brush or whatever, and kind of just put some lines in, so it look like something's going on in there. You can kind of see kind of the blank look it gives you, especially when it's a colored vehicle. But the, you can't deny the casting's good, and they do the exact one sixty four scale. I think they're the most accurate with that. I'd have to say. I think Greenlight and M2 use a little bit of creative license with 164 scale. All right, well, moving along, we're getting through it, and uh, here's a new casting. So this is my first Auto World C8 vet. I have the Greenlight one. We'll look at that in the Greenlight installment next episode. But look at this thing. So this is the regular C8. It's nothing crazy. It's not like a special package, performance package or anything. But it is revolutionary. The 8th generation VET. Mid-engine finally. And they've been toying with mid-engine all the way since the C2 and C3 VETs, really. So it's always been in the engineer's mind to do this car. Um, but uh, they never could get anybody to agree on it that uh, green-lighted the money side. So... And some of the owners, they were traditionalists. They liked the front engine aspect of the vehicle. But you can't deny the performance benefits of having a mid-engine vehicle with a transaxle. And this car is dominating right now. I'm sure in sports car racing it's doing great. I haven't really looked at it this year. C8R. But I'm sure it's very, very competitive. Although I could be eating my words if it's been having mechanical issues this year. Uh, okay, so... Another issue, so this that's why I brought it up on the Camaros. This is very blatantly here. This is the narrow tire. And uh wonder if I probably could write them and they could send me a tire. I'll just give it a shot and I'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, for their model kits, if you're missing a part, they give you what's missing. So maybe they'll do that for this. They did a great job. I don't have the mini GT. I think that'll probably be superb. You know, they're very good, but Outer World's excellent as well. They also took the time to paint the seats and detail the interior. And they have an opening hatch, so we can see the engine and the uh, trunk area. So that's another thing about the Corvette. You have the trunk by the engine because they're relatively not huge. I mean, we can put these small blocks in a lot of cars, including Miata. So. And, then, of course, there's storage up there. But that's a pretty impressive, and then they have the piece of plastic in there. Let's see how they put it in. And they just kind of rivet it in there. But you don't really notice it when you're looking at it this way. So, good job. Painted the engine. A lot of these cars are autos, unfortunately. I think they make a stick uh, a stick shift car. Um, but a lot of the high performance ones, they're like doing the dual clutch or whatever. So Or the 10 speed, whatever they're doing. Car in real life actually is very square looking to me. It doesn't have the fluid lines that like some of its European counterparts. 
but it's a very fast car and it has a lot of performance. And also, it can boast the fact that supposedly you could start one at fifty grand, fifty five thousand, whatever, mid fifties, and then go up from there. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now this is an example here of them just kind of carrying just a little bit further and detailing the headlights. So it doesn't take much. They didn't do much, but it looks a lot better, doesn't it? So, I don't know if they kind of, just kind of didn't, I don't know. We'll just let that be, I guess. Great car. Heavy duty horsepower car. Very cool. So, let's look at, uh, well, square bodies. Let's look at the square bodies. So this is why I'm here in the business of die casting. I love the cars and stuff, but... Trucks are my favorite. So here we go. So this is my first Auto World 80s square body truck. I've seen it from green light for a very long time. Now we have it with Auto World. So basically the same exact truck. They barely did anything different. I think really they just tooled the cab. The tailgate and bed look pretty much the same as the other trucks to tell you the truth. They did not change the base at all. I still have the issue with the very narrow front. So I haven't shimmed this axle yet. I do like the front end though. It's got a lot of character and it's very uh, chunky and thick and has that. It makes you feel like it's a little bit more serious in, in scale. We'll look at the, the green light counterpart in a second. But very cool truck and this is supposed to be a, uh, what is this, 1982. Let's take a look real quick at the box art. So I was able to find this on the pegs. found the whole set. You know, so I just had gotten there. Usually I put two sets at a time, so someone probably got another set. So I got lucky. It feels real good to pay Walmart prices. I know it's a discount. Those are people in the community that don't like it because it is much cheaper than what retail is supposed to be, what manufacturer retail is supposed to be. So... It hurts, you know. I, I am lucky to find them like that. Uh, not everybody has access that way, and I know that's that's tough. And I have bought cars online, believe me. There's a lot of people out there that are hoarding them, and unfortunately, I don't get lucky all the time. Um, but I got lucky on this one, and I probably will get its black counterpart now because I do like this um, this this generation truck. I think I like the '80s ones a lot more. I think they just have more connection with me, maybe. Love the rallies. Tires are great. They kept the tires the same, unlike the Caddies. So I'm happy about that. Same interior, though, so they really didn't update that. They kind of changed a little bit in the 80s. I mean, it was similar, but that seat style went away for the most part. So they need to update that to a bench. They really need to tool a bench interior for the vehicle instead of the buckets. But it's a big deluxe truck. What did we say? Silverado 10. Very pretty. So Silverado was a high trim package back then. And it's got our nice stock Chevrolet engine. See how they moved it to black? Which was accurate. And the orange went away. So I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, oh, what did they do? So they did, they did the change. And they got the matte black fenders. Inner fenders. Love that. So there's our grill there. We'll back this out. Look at this one. So what would you prefer? I feel like the green light looks more detailed. I don't know how to say it, but the there's more character in here. And we can look at this too. I mean, I know that's a single headlight, but here's a quad headlight, even though it's a blazer. So there's something to be said too that having the separate bumper like Greenlight does, it gives it that depth that you're looking for. Where this is still sort of the old style bumper from the 70s. So maybe they should have done a little bit square bumper like that. I don't know. It's got its pluses and minuses. I like the depth though on it. Let's see if we can zoom one more time. Can clean it up a little bit. I think the headlight buckets look pretty good. 
But I do like the green lights clarity. It's just they have a bad chassis. <laughs> and the other thing about them is, unfortunately, they kind of crapped out here where they paint that in. And when you look at it like this, you know, it's just you really don't notice it, especially like that. So they put the vent molding separate like it's supposed to be. So, I mean, that wins for, and I'll also the, you can see the door depth there where you can't really see it there. It's just one panel. But they put the details in. I mean, they got the trim and all that. It's all good, but uh, I could go on forever. Okay, so just really cool. I love it. A lot of trucks, though. We're starting to get a lot of trucks around here. And the other thing, too, I think green lights do good for this. And I like that. So maybe I'll do that with the Auto World truck if I could bear to spare one. I feel like I can find so many more green lights than when I can find these things. And these seem to be the ones I go to customize because they're kind of I can find I could find them, and they cost more than this car does, which is the, the ironic part. But cutting up auto roll, it just it's hard for me to do it. They're very hard to find. But uh, yeah, so just took the uh, utility bed and made this diesel looking right. So if you put the right ride height on this, use the right setup, they look great. I'm going to think I'm going to probably paint those wheels white. So it brings it into the 80s much more. And then we're ready to rock. But anyway, there's our square body. But let's look at one more square body. Pretty exciting. So this is Auto World's exclusive lowered square body. Look at this thing. This is very cool. This is like the new direction that I see diecast going into. A lot of people has been very hot when the model making and also diecast customizers doing weathered vehicles having one like right out of the box so you don't have to pay someone for just to experience to see if you like it i technically like or i personally like a little bit more factory stock showroom fresh cars but some of these resto mods they add a lot more reality to the what's going on in your layout let's say if you had a bunch of cars because not every car is going to be perfect this really makes the car come alive, I'd say. It turns it from like a static display toy sometimes because they're very shiny to something that can be really, I mean, it's pretty neat. So they do start, from what I can determine from when looking at this for a while, is the truck is bare metal and they apply these decals. They're almost like, a, they feel like transfer or tampo, but th this thing is still sort of tacky when you touch it. So and they might even clear over it, but if you look at the texture of this and the light, and it has that printed feel, so some of these edges, these soft edges, if we zoom in a little bit more, um, you can see the, the printing marks. You can see it there by the door lock. You can see it there there and then you can see it right there but if you're not like zooming in on it because I was like I was like how are they doing this so I had to really look at it and you can see some of the stuff overlaps but it's it's great I mean it really looks like someone brushed this on and and did that nice slow weathering technique you can really see it in this this light you can see how they blended it but that's okay they also did the old school Indiana plates. I thought that was great. So this is very clean, the grill, compared to this one. So I feel like the, this is this exclusive is a little executed a little bit better. So this grill does have a lot of potential if it's done correctly. Wheels are cool. They're kind of like Camaro replica wheels, like sort of like that GM. Because they make those wheels now like in bigger sizes with that fluting on the spokes. And you can see it there too how it's like printed on the bed. But the other thing too, this is kind of, does this, and it's all of them do that if they have no paint on them. It chipped off here and there was like these flakes like this that um, were kind of like stuck to the tires. So it flaked a little bit. That's okay. You can see it kind of there on the edge of the tailgate. 
What I do for these beds, if I don't want to come and doing this flapping around, I'll take a little piece of a uh, little bit of wood glue, and then just close it. And the wood glue I use is kind of like white glue; it'll break loose, and you can scrape it right off. So, but it makes a good solution, so things aren't flapping around on you, because it won't even stay up. And you can see the cab there, so you can see how they kind of apply this film there but it's very convincing if we look at it from here like where your you know natural eye would see it kind of like this size it's pretty great and it's got a bare metal bed rolls good tires are very loose on the rims uh, they got a lot of flashing on them so we'll have to kind of go through it a little bit but all in all not bad this is definitely, again, for pocket cars, probably very, I wouldn't want to carry it around too much. I think I feel like it would wear off the paint if it was dragging around in my pocket. Um, Tampa to Auto World, and we got the bow tie on the windows, and we got the bucket interior. So it's cool truck. Oh, and uh, stock motor. Stock motor. Look at that. Huh. This is my other Auto World exclusive that I bought a while ago. Or, someone did this it's exclusive. This is one I dared take out of the package. I got this black step side flat black. I haven't taken it out. I think that one's going to be a pretty solid performer in terms of its value. Plus, I have many that are open, so I kind of like the novelty of having that one encased. But this one, it's green, and I had to get it out, and uh, it's cool. I wonder what kind of motor is in it. I think it's a stock motor. And this is also, you can see the difference too in Auto World's attempt on updating it from the 70s to the 80s. And if you need a refresher course, obviously you see the grill difference, but the big change was having this bump in the in the body. Or this one's smoothed out, so it's like the biggest deal. But you can kind of backdate and update these trucks going back and forth with stuff and kind of do that but I'd say the 70s have a lot of character on them though they do look very good so square bodies we looked at that and here is the package exclusive this thing's a bad boy um, 24.96 I believe they're sold out um, if you want to know about these, you just have to follow Auto World, or you got to just be on a Facebook group or whatever, whatever you prefer, Instagram. And you just got to, this one, you got to straight up just pre order it. You can't really dilly dally. <laughs> these type of things nowadays, like as soon as they say pre order, just do it because a lot of people hem and haul, even if it's 2,000 of them. And it only, they usually sell out the week before or right when they're getting sold. So just think of it that way with those type of things the way i've seen it if you want to get ahead of it we've seen some vehicles today not a lot of trucks a lot of cars but that's okay i got some good gm stuff and that aston martin i think that's awesome i can't wait to find the blue one it's like a light blue with white seats so it's a great great car so hopefully everybody can find one that sees it this channel and uh tell them mig sent you look at that truck too all right I got to get the green lights all rounded up. There's a ton of them. We'll go through those and we'll talk about some of the stuff and my thoughts on that side of the die cast world next time. But check out the past videos. We got a lot of cars up to this date that we've looked at. So get yourself caught up to speed because then we'll kind of reference that next time when we look at some things. Thanks again for watching. And uh, thanks for all the new subscriptions and the thumbs up. Helps us out greatly. More to come. Till next time.